and welcome to Festival Speaks. Today is, you know, it's the Thursday between Christmas and New Year's. The, the number doesn't matter. I mean, it really never matters, but especially doesn't matter right now. I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat is QRRL on Instagram. Thanks for coming over for visiting times and activities, perhaps. <laughs> Um, this week's episode is going to have uh, the shenanigans, it's going to have spinning and knitting and it feels like it should have like 17 other things. So one of the things that was supposed to have that I forgot to tell you is that we are going to do a pre-order for library bags. So both the older style uh, and the newer style are going to be available in the shop on January 1st at 9 p.m. FatSquirrelFibers.com. So if you've wanted a library bag in the past, but you've missed out, there will be a pre-order. Those are typically four to six weeks because I order the fabric um, to be printed especially for those. And then I sew them up and send them out to you. So it does take a minute, but if you're willing to wait, I'll have those available for you on January 1st at FatSquirrelFibers.com. <gasps> And now back to the rest of this nonsense. So, um, yeah. <laughs> what have you been doing? Are you having, like, I, I, we, I've never been, my family, I guess, or maybe, like, just my people that I've assisted with have never been big New Year's resolution people. I don't really think that our family really ever talked about New Year's resolutions when I was growing up. It never felt like it was part of, like, the rhythm of who I was like it doesn't have like anyway so I never really remember to think about them until like other people are thinking about them and I, I mean I don't really do New Year's resolutions but there are times where like again this is like a time where you're thinking about pretty much from the solstice until the new year I'm like thinking about like like oh like I need to reflect on some way on my past year not for your perspective, but just for my own. So like, I can kind of like, you know, sometimes it feels like what I do both like mentally and physically is just like this flood, like just like a garden hose, just like constantly spraying you in the face. And it's hard to, to step back from it and actually like look at what happened. And like, cause when I start to like, I was trying to like, look up like, okay, like how do you reflect over the last year? I need structure. That's all there is to it. Um, I crave structure. So I was like, oh, like, well, how do you reflect on the year? Because I started to think about it. And I was like, I don't know that anything happened this year. Like, I really was like, did I just, just I just had a Groundhog Day year. Like, I just did the same thing every day for the whole year, which is clearly not true. But in, like, for this, like, moment of just, like, trying to think back, I was like, I, I don't, I can't find anything to hold on to. So luckily there is a phone in my hand and I was able to like go with, at least look at my picture roll and be like, oh, that, oh, that's right. I actually went backpacking for the first time this year. Like that was a huge thing. And oh, we went and did the Devonian fossil beds and like, oh, that was actually really cool. And so yeah, like, do you have a method for reflecting over the year? Does it, does it come naturally to you? I know there are lots of people who reflect like, um, like as part of like a weekly, uh, rhythm. I, don't, I can't think of the right word. It's just like part of their weekly routine. That's what I'm thinking. Um, like some people have, like I do a, I do a bullet journal. Um, I don't do a fancy bullet journal. Like I don't think like you will never see a plan with me video. Cause like mine is literally just like, just handwriting. There's nothing pretty. I might occasionally throw a washi tape in there just because, well, let's face it. Those paper tapes are amazing. Um, but so like, so, so I like do that, but I don't do it I don't, I, I've not, I've traditionally been a person that like at the beginning of the week, like sets goals for the week or like, or sets goals for the year and then tries to break them down. I probably should be that person. Um, but do you do, do you do that? Do you like, do you reflect, do you reflect more than once a year? Do you, do you have like a set time that you choose to think back on like what you've been doing? And I don't know, maybe that's like part of being self-employed like there is no like other person to be like hey you've been doing a good job or hey this didn't work out like why can we how can we do this different or 
or maybe it's just like my own brain and how it works. I don't know, but it would be interesting to be a more reflective person, wouldn't it? <laughs> so this is always the time of year where I'm like, I need to start reading poetry and like consuming my media, whether that's like books or um, like the, the most, the moving pictures <laughs> or like whatever it is. Like I need to be more, I need to be more present in it. And then like in four weeks, I'll be again, just listening to like Agatha Raisin on repeat while I'm working or something. <laughs> but yeah. Do you, uh, oh, and so then of course, like something, I don't know. Also part of this, like thinking about like, oh, like what, what did I, what did I even read last year? I don't even, I have no idea what I made last year in terms of like, I mean, there is this record on the internet that some of you have watched. Thank you. Uh, of what I made last year. But like, if you asked me this moment, what I made last year, I would, I would, I, I, I can't think of anything at this moment, at this minute. Sure, I know I made things because we've talked about them. <laughs> but so, like thinking about like like trying to like oh like why don't I like reflect more on like things because part of it I think is because we do this thing and like there is um, a pressure I put on myself to like make um, to like have things to talk about with you or like. Uh, and like part of it is that like my job, like the actual, like my sewing job, the actual like grindiness of it is re very repetitive. And so lots of times I just want like, um, like easy entertainment in my ears. So like, you know, thrillers or like modern romance or, you know, just something that's, that if the machine is loud and I can't hear a few minutes of it, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna be lost and have to like pause and go back and it's not going to cause me to necessarily have to reflect a lot about, you know, one thing or the other. Um, I just got lost in that thought. But then there are things that I read that I, that are, you know, more impactful to me and that like stick with me more in the moment. And it would be nice to have a way to like reflect over that. So I was looking at some, I think actually maybe YouTube suggested it to me. I don't know that I actually looked for it um, because I had been looking at some like people's best books of 2022, like their favorite books of 2022. And so then I think that put me in the algorithm to see people's reading journals. Um, and I've definitely seen people like, you know, use their bullet journal, like have, um, spaces in it where they like you know um like that really cute bookshelf where they draw like the spines of the bookshelf and then they write in the names of the books they read so charming and the people that like keep track of that on different methods but this is the first time I'd, i guess maybe the first time i've actually seen people do like specific reading journals and so then that i kind of fell down that rabbit hole very quickly so yeah the reading journal it's very tempting I, okay, it's more than tempting. Here's my confession. Um, <laughs> I have decided that I cannot go all in on the paper crafts, like, um, because they are very exciting and very interesting, but also I'm ha currently having like a space issue in my life. <laughs> so I decided I can't go in. I'm not allowing myself to go all in on the paper crafts. But what I did decide is that clearly I could just go on um, my iPad and I could learn all about good notes. And you know how the, all the young people take their notes on there and they look so gorgeous. So I decided that I would do a reading journal on good notes, maybe. I mean, did I buy one? Of course I did. Do I know that you can just make your own? Of course I do. But this one was already done. I mean, like formatted and things like that. Somebody did all that work. I could just, you know, ride on it. And then like, if I decide I really enjoy doing this, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a bit of a lie, like in the terms of like, you know, in my life, like I have no fear that somebody is going to give me like a ransom and like say that they're going to publish my camera roll because like, <laughs> go for it. It's pictures of like quilting fabric and quilts and dogs and my family and like yarn. Um, however, like if you do the journal and like somebody could just totally hold me ransom because I mean, 
I am not like necessary. I don't necessarily want to do like dear diary kind of journaling. I mean, I think that, but I do think that that's part of, part of like, for example, at times in my past where I've done like, um, the artist way, like the morning pages, like that is part of the junk that gets, sh oh, I'm shaking you. That's part of the junk that gets shaken out, like in those morning, like just like, um, just to like release and move through them and like to process certain things. Like I, I, for example, would never want somebody to like publish my tarot journals because they are like me trying to process my own feelings about whatever it is. Like sometimes it's my own stuff. Sometimes it's my interaction with other people. Like sometimes, you know, it's like all of, so like, I will, I will, I will not lie. Like that does, that does actually give me pause. And also I heard somebody talking about like, I hadn't really thought about this aspect, but it's also very true. Like, there's no, like, I, there's no thought in my head that, like, my stuff is going to be, like, Sylvia Plath's and, like, Smith College is going to have, like, a wing of the rare books room, like, committed to, like, every tissue I blew my nose on. But there is this reality of, like, for example, when Steve Jobs went back to try to find some of his, like, journal files, like, on a very early uh, computerized system he used, like, the, he, he, like, he... Gosh, I'm so shaky for you. It must be like against the table. I apologize. Um, like that he, like with all of his resources and with like all of the like super genius computer people that he has at his disposal could not recover those data files. Like there is that also that like, and you know, that's, and like it was only like 10 or 15 years after the fact. It wasn't like a hundred years after the fact, obviously. But that, again, we can like go and look at like Da Vinci's, Codex, you know, like we can go look at like, you know, cause, cause those records are something that is tangible and again, they could be lost certainly. Um, but they're not as ephemeral. And so that was also kind of an, an interesting thought. Again, not for like, like not like that somebody else needs to read them, but that I would like to read them maybe in 10 or 15 years. And what do you want? The dog is, it's really driving me crazy today. So that was the other thing. I was like, I, I could lose my reading journal. I'd be, I would, I mean, I wouldn't want, but that was okay. But like, you know, that other stuff that again, would be interesting to reflect on perhaps more. Um, I don't know. Also, I just, so the other reason I've never gotten into like, um, bullet journaling or any other sort of journaling on a device like on a digital device is that I've never this never appealed to me to like type um I don't know I guess typing just still feels like work and like there's something about the texture of writing and the the like visual accomplishment and like that you specifically did that like you because it's you it has your hand you know it has your thumbprint on it versus a screen of typed words which like Yes, I know if I read it that I've done it, but like there's not that automatic input in my brain that it's my work. It could be anybody's. Um, so that's very enjoyable. So, but like again, like this one notes thing. And if you don't know what one notes is, it's basically just like a, it's basically just a, um, an app or whatever. I use mine on iOS that it's just like a, it's like a way to, it's like, it's like hyperlinked PDFs is really all it is. It's just like, it doesn't like, take your information and like put it on another calendar and like it, it's you just like annotating pdfs and then there's links like you can nest them and organize them within the document like you could a paper document um so it definitely does feel like more of an analog system even though it's digital um but again like the handwriting itself so i'm gonna try it with the the ipad and like a paper like a paper cover like um you know there are screen protectors that have like a papery texture i'm gonna try i'm just gonna see what it's like it might be fun. It might not work for me at all, but it would be cool to like have a better record. Like, yeah, sometimes I remember to put it on good notes that I've finished something, but sometimes, I mean, it's not something I really go back to look at to see if I've, you know, whatever. We'll see. We'll see. So yeah, I don't know. Like I have not done any big thoughts about like goals or anything in the new year. I don't know if I will. Maybe I won't. It's all just an artificial division of time anyway. What does it matter? Right, Gus? Gus has zero New Year's resolutions. Except maybe to get more bacon. That's probably would be his for sure. 
to roll in more stinky stuff. Oh, mom, I'm looking at there. Maybe there is some additional stinky stuff that I missed. And I should probably make that a priority for this next year. He's the worst dude. So, yeah. Um, oh, but so, shenanigans. Yeah, sure, shenanigans. Of course, we do Christmas. We celebrate Christmas with family. So, I got to visit with my mom and my stepdad and just have a very nice and chill thing. Gosh, you're totally trying to hog the camera. so fancy uh but i will tell you this one thing that we did which with uh, my husband my and my child we decided i really l love the idea of being able to go somewhere to like, do christmas lights like to look at christmas lights when i was a little kid i probably told this story before so if i have please just skip it forward. but when i was a little kid we would go there were several years that we went to this place in southern ohio i could not tell you the name of it i could not tell you where it is it's somewhere off of 32 and it was in the middle of nowhere. Like you definitely had to drive over like a very weird bridge. Like it was in basically a holler because it was a valley, but it was steep enough that you could definitely holler from one side to the other. I don't know that it was culturally a holler, but because I was too young to know that to be able to differentiate that. And I can't remember enough, but you know, it was in the, the neighborhood, if nothing else. And it was from what I remember, it was just like a dude who was really invested in maintaining this lights display. And he, there was a house even, and I don't think it, I don't know if they like lived upstairs. I don't even know, but there was a house you would walk through and it was much more like secular Christmas, like Christmas. The teen is assembling a new bed upstairs. So you hear lots of, <laughs> that's what's going on. Um, and so, but then, and I feel like one side of the, the valley was like just very like 50s-ish Christmas, like, you know, traditional American Christmassy kind of stuff. But then the other side was like a trip through Christ's life. And I don't remember much of it, except that there was definitely like a crucifixion section with like all red lights, like even the lights in the sidewalks. There were sidewalks, by the way. This is, this is a pretty nice thing. Even the like slice in the sidewalk were red. It was like intense, <laughs> but it was so fun because it would be, it was usually cold. It seems like it was always cold. And then there was like a little trailer that they had where you could go and get like hot chocolate. And like, I'm sure there were foods and stuff, but I don't remember that. And again, it was like a thing. Cause you had to like drive out in the middle of nowhere. It took a long time for me because I was a kid. Um, but anyway, because I just love the idea of being able to like go and walk through Christmas lights. And we have some here in Cincinnati. Like when the kiddo was little, we did, or in Cincinnati, we live in Indianapolis. <laughs> when the kiddo was little, we always used to do the Christmas lights at the zoo. But since they've been older, we don't have a membership and it's kind of cost prohibitive just to go for one day. Like how is the Indianapolis Zoo more expensive than the Cincinnati Zoo, y'all? Doesn't make sense. Um, and then there's New Fields, which we've never done that. That's the the Indianapolis Art Museum. Also, though, pretty expensive, like thirty ish dollars a person. So this year we compromise. And also, my husband is terribly like he works outside, and it's just not joyful for him to go be outside and be cold. Understandable. I get it. It's a novelty to me, not to him. So we decided that we would do the, well, I decided that we would do the drive through lights, which is at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Y'all. And I know they have the same display at other places. I think it's just like a franchise. It was rad. Okay, Gus, you're literally on the table, man. You can, you can pretend you're allowed to have two feet on the table. You're not allowed to have four feet on the table. Y'all. It was so good. I'm not gonna lie. We went the, the weekend before Christmas. So it was probably like the busiest weekend. And we had to wait in line, like we, in our car. So it was a horrible waste of fuel. I will never go back at that time again because I felt guilty the whole stinking time about being in my car and just like letting it idle while I was waiting. That was dumb. Um, 
But, and also while we were waiting, I was just like, I don't, this is, this is lamer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> like, that's like every Christmas thing ever, right? You're like, mm. And they had like the 12 days of Christmas, but they had it from like counting from one up to 12. So like they started with the partridge and the pear tree. And I was like, okay, I can't even, I have to, every time I see a new thing to remember what the it's display is, I have to sing the song from the 12 down. I was like, that's the worst way ever to number, whatever. Anyway. So I was just like, man. So that was like my first clue. Like, this is not well thought out. I'm suspicious. So we're like dry and we're just waiting. And I'm just like, Ugh. so we finally get to the place where we're, um, I'm not like, Ugh, that's so over exaggeration. I was just like, oh, I'm afraid this is not going to be as fun as I thought it was going to be. So we're like waiting and we finally get to the place where they like tell you like what station to tune your radio to. And I kid you not. Like they already have, like we're already seeing the lights. We're in two lanes of traffic. There's the cars over here on like the inside. They have like the better view. And then we're over here and I'm just like, hmm. So like we already don't have the best view and the lights are like sinking and they're like doing stuff and they're flashing. But they're like kind of over here. I'm just like, I don't know about this. And then they have us tune our radio and I kid you, I kid you not the first song and it's by total coincidence because there's like an hour long loop of music I find out the first song is God Bless the USA is that right is that what it's called whatever it's a very America song it's God Bless the USA right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. American. yeah that's it I'm, so, I'm just like singing it through my head like mm -hmm. YouTube's gonna copyright me like Mrr. I kid you not, not even a Christmas song. I was like, this is some Indiana stuff. What the heck? And at that point I was enjoying it just because I was like, oh, this is really interesting. But it totally redeemed itself. We finally got through and like we got, and like the first like entrance into it was like this, um, you know, archway with like snowflakes that were flashing. Yeah, the snowflakes were first. And like, was an actual Christmas song. And I was like immediately transported into the spirit of Christmas. It was really great. I was the driver and I just kept being like, yes. I was like, at I was like hitting the steering wheel, like in rhythm to the music. Cause I was just like, so like invested in this experience. I think actually it might be better to be the driver because like, that was the other thing. I was like, oh, is it going to be real? Like, I don't want to be the driver. I'm like, does the driver get the full experience? But also like my husband gets really stressed out in traffic and I was like, okay, I think, I think that rock will help us now. I pulled the table from the camera. Um, I was like, I just don't want to deal with that. But I was like, but will I really have like the full experience? I think you actually get a better experience as the driver. Because you're actively, do well, I mean, also it would work if you're knitting or whatever you're doing, if you're crafting in some way. Uh, or maybe also if your brain wasn't. But, <laughs> but the driving actually was like enough that you like had something you needed to pay attention to like a little bit, but they could also experience the thing. So it like really put you in the experience. By the way, I'm not sponsored by whatever light show this was. I don't know. I'm just telling you, it was very exciting. And if you're thinking about going to one and you're like, eh, I, I, just try it. Just try it. Just see. And then at some point, so then there's like, you know, more, more, more. You drive, drive, drive. At some point, there's like part of the display is like, like um, it looks like a Christmas tree with like a star on it. Like it's the, sh it's a triangle, right? But like it's somehow made so that there's like, a light show sort of like in the tree shape. Um, for example, as we were leaving, we finished the full loop of music and God bless the USA came back on and there was like full on, like all the military people, like all of the different uniforms for like the Navy and the army. Like there was like a person in the the uniform that like kind of scroll across. And this is all like, it's not like a film. Like it's not like a, and it's a pixelated image, like a very pixelated, like heavily, like 8-bit level pixelation. Um, 
And so like this, and like this, so there was that, and then there was like, a, I really feel like there were guns. I could be wrong. I may have just projected that on, but there was definitely like an eagle and like, fireworks and like USA, like scrolling up the thing. But before that, in the same thing, as we were like turning the corner, like the world's coalesce and I got to see, it was like, I don't know if the song was Emmanuel, but it was like a very like, not, it was a Christian Christmas song. Like, you know, it was like Jingle Bells. I kid you not. There was this, there's the star on the tree and then like shooting lights coming down. And then Jesus like appearing like out of like he was like being beamed down from the star like a la Star Trek -y style like he was like and it was like this image of him was like cold like... that alone worth the price of admission and I am so glad that the team also saw this happen because if they hadn't I might have really I might have really believed that I had just made it up because. <laughs> because that's how crazy it was. I'm just saying, like, if you have the chance, if you're feeling the spirit, and you have, and, and, oh my gosh, please get a car load of people. I am disappointed that we did not have more people for me to be like, did you see that? Too. <laughs> it was amazing. But again, it was also not, it was not like I was just watching it ironically, like a jerk. Like that was an insane, that part was bananas. And again, the God bless the USA, bananas. But like the rest of it was mostly amazing in like a truly festive way. Again, it was so good. There were creepy like elf things singing. That was creepy. I'm not gonna lie, that part was kind of creepy. But generally, amazing. amazing. Like, what else are we talking about? Yeah, the military with the flags and the eagle. It was really a thing. I see Jesus beaming down from a star a la Trek. Yeah, uh-huh. And then there was also, like, it wasn't the same pl place, but, like, a, there was another thing that was kind of the same. And it was, like, there was, like, this, like, metal dude, like, with long hair. Again, 8-bit style. Like, playing air guitar? I can't remember which... Was it Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree? No, it couldn't have been Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. That would have been too much rhythmically. I don't remember what song it was, but that was also excellent. <laughs> so good. But what else were we talking about? Man, I did puzzles. Oh my gosh, I literally had to take a break from my puzzles because I think I was giving myself like headaches. I mean, I'm fairly confident. At one point I had, I highly recommend the Advent puzzle, by the way. If you enjoy puzzling and you have the ability to have like a thousand piece puzzle out and in progress for this 24 days to count down to whatever you want to count down to, it's the best. Um, I'll put a picture of it in progress here just so you can kind of see like what it looks like. And so to clarify, some people were very confused about it. Like some people thought I actually did my puzzle like in a grid, like they, I'm not a robot. I promise uh, you just get like a chunk a day to work on so if you have a thousand piece puzzle you get like 40 ish pieces to work on in a day and they're all in one chunk so for example you could take a whole puzzle and just I guess randomly divide it um, and do that but like the, the enjoyment for me is that you're actually getting to complete like a mini puzzle essentially every day you're completing a chunk of it every day so I enjoyed it so much that and I was working another puzzle like alongside it. I should have worked multiple puzzles. No, I, I need to either go get some new prescription. I need to get my eyes checked to make sure. But um, yeah, I think I'm breaking my eyeballs. <laughs> it's not even like puzzles are that hard to see. By the way, like what is so last time I got my eyes checked, I thought they had gotten really bad, and the the eye doctor was really like um your eyes feel dry? And I was like, well, you know, now you mentioned it. Yeah, a little bit. He's like, your eyes are super dry. He's like, your eyes cannot focus if they're this dry. But now I think it actually is because like they're getting worse. <laughs> Menopause, man. 
Nobody tells you it might give you dry eyeballs. They tell you other things that might get dry. I'm just saying. Um, but your eyeballs. Oh, it's a constant battle between dry skin and eyes. I just need to be in a lotion hot tub at all times. It's like a lotion hot tub season. It's the season where I buy like weird raw butters to just try to make my own butter lotionness. It's never enough. I'm like sugar scrub every time I'm in the shower. I live in coconut oil. Anyway, but it's just like to be a guy's check. But anyways, I enjoyed it so much that the, I did a puzzle, I did this puzzle, um, partly alongside of it. And so I decided that once I got it done, I was going to break it up and do an advent. I don't know if I'll keep it or if I'll give it away, but I wanted to do it obviously because you have to work the puzzle in order to like break it up into piece, into chunks for another person. And so what I did Yeah, you can just see what I did and I'll talk about it over top of this, but. Okay, so here is my puzzle. I worked mine on a piece of poster board um, just because like that's a flat surface, but it also was nice because it made it very easy to flip over. Um, because what I'm going to do is actually number the back of the puzzle to kind of make sure that I'm getting the right number of pieces into like broken up for each day. So that's all I do just to flip it over um, and then I'm just going to start numbering it. Now what I decided to do was number them like I did 41 pieces mostly with a number one on them just because um, I was afraid that if I was like breaking it apart like so there's multiple ways you could do this right. I decided to number mine because the puzzle I did had numbers on the back and so I think I just like was in that mind frame but as I was numbering further along, I realized what you could also do is like, A, not even flip your puzzle over. Just take out 41 pieces like from the corner and then just start putting about 41 pieces. And again, some days you need to do 42 just to make up the difference. Putting those in a bag or separating them out however you decide to do. Um, but for some reason, I just started numbering them. And I don't hate that method because it means you didn't have to like... Theoretically, it means that like if the next person wants to do this, they could just easily flip the puzzle over, put the, the pieces back in the bags and, and be ready. But so you can also see that um, what I'm doing here is just, I'm using these little bags because I do sachets um, in my um, knitting bags that I make. And so I happen to just have these on hand and they really work out to be the perfect size for the, the amount of puzzle pieces you need. Um, and I didn't, they're not beautiful in terms of like, you know, you could like do beautiful lettering on them if it were, or like numbering on them if it were a gift or, and I'm sure you can do many fancier things, but I just wrote the numbers on with a marker because um, sometimes done is better than good, right? Um, <laughs> and so I used these, but we've also done um, advents in the past, like Christmas countdown calendars in the past where we've used like the miniature uh, lunch bags. So they're just like a tiny lunch bag and those work really well as well. Um, so you don't need to go out and buy something like this, but my thought is that hopefully it'll be again, more reusable. The person can then gift it along if they want to, whatever. Um, so yeah, so here I'm just like numbering the bags and, and putting things away. So yeah, I mean, it's probably ideal to try to find a puzzle that has a poster with it. Like lots of puzzles do have a poster with them. That way, if your sachets or whatever you decide don't fit back in the box, I mean, obviously you could just like cut out the image or whatever, but it might be nice if there was a poster. Um, so yeah, I've been doing lots of puzzling. Uh, what else made my garland? Just lots of coziness. I'm trying to really chill out this week and um, oh, yeah, and also work on my room. So I've been peeling wallpaper, steaming wallpaper, knocking out plaster. But only in like three hour chunks because that's enough for me, quite frankly. <laughs> my shoulder starts to get tired. Because, um, like, again, the stinking ceiling. 
I've had like at least 17 moments of just like, that's it. I'm just, I'm just going to take all the plaster down. I'm done. I'm just going to knock it all down and put up drywall. It's too, and they're like, no. But I can't help thinking about like, ooh, my like white room with wooden shelves and twinkle lights because I'm clearly still 17. Whatever. It's pretty. I can just retreat. <sighs> so yeah, that's it. And so like maybe we should talk about crafting. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I have been working. I did the um, Knit Spin Farm Christmassy Countdown Advent Time. And so I've been working on that. I did not finish it. This is, I think, maybe the first time I've ever not finished my Christmas countdown thing. Um, so, but I still have, but I have lots of spindles that I'm gonna, getting ready to ply. And I just, I think I have like three days left, maybe. And I'm okay with that. I was kind of stressed out for a while, being like, I'm falling behind. And then I was like, <laughs> Christmas will still happen whether or not I get this yarn spun. Like, it's fine. <laughs> Take a pill. Um, so these are all of my in-progress spindles. Some of them have, like, this one has two days on it. Some of them just have one. Some of them are not finished. Uh, but these are all Bosworth spindles. I like the Bosworth Midi quite a lot. I like heavier spindles rather than lighter ones because I just do. Yeah, it's enjoyable. And it's been a really good reason to use spindles that usually I'm just okay with collecting a collection but also it's nice to use them and again like figure out like oh I do really like this weight more than that weight or I like this weight to do this more than you know and I just have a reason to actually work on my spindles so that's been really nice and I've enjoyed it quite a bit um yeah and then I have some finished knitting object I have a finished knit. I have one that I don't have to show you because I was working on slippers for a Christmas present that I did not show you. So I do recommend though, if you're needing to make slippers um, or you're wanting to make slippers or whatever, if you decide to make slippers, um, I have used the, phone is deciding to slow down lately. It's a little bit frustrating. I have used the felted clogs pattern from um, Bev Galaskis. Galaskis? Galaskis. Uh, it's the fiber trends pattern. It looks like this. This is the very first year I couldn't find it again. Like I've only had this this pattern like in like a sleeve protector like, a la I purchased it probably in like 1999 or something. I don't even know. The early 2000s um and this is the first year i couldn't find it when i went to make one so i did buy the digital version <laughs> she deserves another like eight dollars of me mine because i've made so many of these things <laughs> but if you're in the market for a felted slipper it's really great i recommend it highly it has the reason i like it so much is because it has a double layer sole and for me at least like that's really important i tend to like wear through single layer felted soles quite a bit i made this pair in cascade eco and it was for a men's size nine ish and i almost made it with one skein almost i just barely had to break into the second skein so you can do like a contrasting color for like the edges or like do the sole with two colors and if you're doing that you can definitely get away with one skein um unless you're doing a bigger size obviously uh, i highly recommend the pattern there are things i would like to like maybe write in for myself um like before i have done it without seaming uh, but really it just as it's written it's totally a great pattern uh, it is fiddly. It's not fiddly. It is, you do have to pay attention to it. There are certain rows that have multiple short rows in them. Um, and they're easy, like they're grouped into one row, but you're like going back and forth on short rows multiple times. And so it's easy to lose track of like, have I done just two short rows in this or have I done all of them? It's a little bit like, you gotta think a little bit about it in certain rows, but overall it's very enjoyable. Um, 
And then I, oh, okay, so that was a thing. And then I finished my Quaker yarn stretcher. I did not weave in the ends, I just noticed. Uh, but this is the Quaker yarn stretcher. And it's a great pattern. It is specifically written by Susan Ashcroft, right? Or am I, dang it. She's the one who did that pattern, but she, did she do this pattern too? It doesn't seem unlikely. It is, it's both of hers. Okay, Susan Ashcroft. And it's specifically written for hand spun to try to get as much length um, out of a single skein of hand spun as you can. This one is still is a double skein because I just often do double skein or double, you know, eight ounces of spinning fiber instead of four. But it is specifically written so that you can get a scarf out of four. Uh, it's highly enjoyable. It's a very easy pattern. It's definitely TV watching good times and of course if you don't do if you don't spin yarn there's so many yarns out there now that have like a hand spun look to them that you can get a similar effect but yeah so I finished that guy super great it's a great one too if you like want to hold um, a couple yarns together to do a scrappy one throw in a skein of mohair uh, it just will you can basically just do the pattern until you're out of yarn so again, Quaker Yarn Stretcher, Susan Ashcroft. Also by Susan Ashcroft. Uh, not sponsored. By Susan. Uh, I have almost finished my Brain Freeze inspired stole. Is that what we call this? Like giant rectangle. Um, what the hey, y'all? This thing has been on the needles for so long. But it is actually, I think it has turned out quite beautifully. Let me hold it up closer for you just in case you're like, what? That is pretty gorgeous. This is yarn I purchased from my local yarn store. There is like a um, Wabash Woolens. Is there's a solid color that's like um like a light wheat, and then the other yarn is Lang Yarns Cloud. And I have no idea what colorway it is. Oh, color is 1077. Um, so I used two skeins of each. So four skeins total. And I think what I'm going to need to do is the pattern is originally a cowl. And then another designer has also made it into a boomerang shaped shawl. But I needed it to be a rectangle. Well, I wanted it to be a rectangular shawl for this product project because I'm going to make like pockets on the end. And so originally I thought I would like actually make a pocket that was the width of the scarf, but, or the stole, but now I realize that that's way too wide. Like that would just be silly. This is what happens when you decide to make your own pattern. So, but what I have decided I think will work is that I'm going to take this shawl and then fold it like this. and then seam up a little bit so that there will be a pocket right there. I think that'll work. Right? I'm pretty sure it'll work. But what I also need to do is the edges are rolling a little bit and I'm gonna try to just steam it to see. I did, blo I did block it, I didn't like hard block it. I just washed it and laid it out. And they are still rolling a bit. Um, it's not a terrible amount. I might try to steam it and see if that will flatten it out. But if not, I'll need to go around it probably and put like a garter ridge edge or maybe crochet the edge. Uh, I don't have any more of the wheat colored yarn, but I do have more of the, um, the Lang Cloud. And I didn't mention this this time in case you're new. The Lang Cloud is like the, one of those tube yarns where the, the outside of the yarn is basically, it's basically like a nylon I-cord. Um, but that's very open and then the fibers are actually blown into it. So this one I think is alpaca and lots of times they have alpaca in them. Oh. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's just 90% merino and 10% nylon. Uh, but lots of times you'll see that these yarns have alpaca in them or what have you. But basically it does make a yarn. It does not have like um, elasticity as much in the strand. I'm hoping that knitting it alongside 
um, a traditional two ply yarn that I'll still have more memory than if it were just by itself. Uh, but they are very lightweight for the warmth. Uh, this is a bulky, I mean, I would say this is at least Aran. It might be classified as bulky on Ravelry, I'm not sure. But 100 grams is 260 meters, which that's a lot of yardage um, for that weight. So, yeah, this is one of the reasons I did it with that yarn was, A, it was fun. I thought it would be great for this brain freeze pattern. But also it would try, it was hoping that it would be light, fairly light for the amount of warmth that you would have with it. But then again, balancing it with a traditional two-ply yarn that is wool, I think the, the um, it, hopefully it will give it still some more memory. It won't stretch out as much as perhaps it would by itself. But yeah, so that's got a little bit more to do, but it's almost done. I don't even want to know how long I've had this on the needles, but it's been like a year, I think. There's a lot of slip stitches in it. Like, a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and again, that, rec that rectangular shape really slows me down. And I've heard other knitters say the same thing. Um, especially when it's not as intuitive and like, I still needed to look at the pattern just to make sure. It wasn't like I had to memorize, like, oh, uh, okay, gotta memorize, I'm gonna knit Tuesday. It was just like I need to verify, like, okay, yes, these are just two rows of this thing and these, you know. So yeah. Um, I haven't actually cast that on, I don't know why I brought it over to show you. But I also decided to, uh, some friends and I are gonna do the West Knits Hybrid Knit Along. So West Knits has um, a new book out and one of the patterns is the Aurora Cabin Shawl. So it is a five color shawl, five skein shawl. And it's super fun, super sweet. And again, so I'm doing it and then inspired me to, if you're a patron of the podcast and you want to join in on the Discord group, if you don't, that's also totally cool. But if you want to join in on the Discord group, we're doing a little like knit along for January, February. It's not just this shawl. Like it's pretty much just make along. I said it was a make along, anything that was string based, but really I don't care about rules. So if you're making something you'd like to show <laughs> patron of the podcast, go to the Discord group and uh, we'll along together. I will definitely make you a prize because that's fun. But here's mine so far. I'll show you my colorways. I don't have them in a bag because I was, I've been trying to think about the colors for uh, I like a month now. Not even gonna lie to you. Um, and so this is ultimately what I have decided on. I think. So what I do sometimes when I'm trying to figure out my colors of something is I'll put them in one of these like clear bins or like whatever, or a bag or whatever. And I'll just put it somewhere that I can see it a lot. And I'm like, and it lets me just from like, do what do I want? and I play with things and audition different colors. And, and so this works best if you're doing like a blocky project where there's like blocks of colors, because it doesn't give you a true understanding of what they're going to look like. And this shawl specifically, like there are certain sections that are like all five colors together. And so it doesn't give you an actual appreciation of what that might look like, but you know, it can kind of get you there. And so now they just lived, have lived there, moved them out yet. So I did cast on though, and I have um, the first little bit done. Oops. And the reason I chose these color way, these colors is I had originally I was originally, when I bought these colors, thinking of doing like a bluebird project. My grandparents and my grandfather especially love the bluebirds. And I really was trying to like figure something out that had that job, that vibe. Um, and, but they just kind of hung, like didn't quite find the project to do them with. Originally I was gonna make a project for my mamaw before she passed. Um, but it just didn't come together. And so I was excited to try to play with them and use them for this. And basically I added in a brighter blue than I had originally intended because actually bluebirds are quite bright, but I didn't know that I wanted to go that bright. And then I have a brown for like my backup color. And I think I'm going to use this 
So there's an extra color in here. I'm not sure if I'll use the orange at all times when I'm like giving the pop of color, but I have an option to do a brown too if it feels like too much. Um, but so far I'm enjoying it. I just have this little bit done, but I forgot how fun it is to do these. I really enjoy the West Inch shawls that are like, or just any shawl that's like a sampler where it's just like chunks of different motifs that you're working on. Um, I find them very enjoyable. So this one I actually had done the next, like part of the next chunk, uh, but decided to switch out one of my colors or to flip out the order of one of my colors. So I actually took it apart and I'm gonna redo it, which normally I would never do that. <laughs> I would just be like, eh, I'll just switch it out later. Um, like, like in later progressions. But I was like, no, no, I really think I want that color here and this color here. So. Uh, which is another reason I have a sixth color available in case I need to like, I run out of yarn for a certain section because I played with an order in a, in a way I wasn't supposed to. Um, but yeah, so that's the, the West Knits Aurora, Aurora Cabin Shawl. And I really wanna make that hat too. There's a hat with like the super intense, I would say like the primary like component maybe is this, there's like a slip stitch section that has all of the different colors in it, all the five different colors of the shawl. Um, and so there's a hat that has that too. And I think it looks super cute. So I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think I definitely need to make that. Right. Right. And then, yeah, that's all of the knitting. I don't know. It feels like I don't have as much to show you, but it's just in my head. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe it's because I've been thinking about you more because I've been trying to remember to film process things. And so maybe that's why it feels like I should have more to show you because I have been thinking about you like while I'm doing other things, like while I'm doing things more. Maybe that's what it is. And I just like, oh, this is a, I don't have enough to show you this time. But I did. It's fine. So yeah. Yay. I hope you're having a, re a restful time or an energized time or a lonely time that's peacefully lonely and like that you can en enjoy or not. I don't know, but like, so thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you like the podcast, if you could hit the like button that would be rad um or subscribe i'm not good at usually asking for those things but it occurs to me i probably should occasionally <laughs> um i i hope you are energized by the turning of the year i hope that that feeling of like shedding off something perhaps, like you can put down some things from last year. I hope you can put down some things and maybe move into the new year with a little bit less weight on your, on your shoulders. But that was not a metaphor for a diet ad. So also those guys are jerks. Don't listen to them. They just want your money. Just, I'm, just, I'm sorry. Did you know I was all like peaceful that I was like, wait, that could be misconstrued. <laughs> I admit like emotional baggage, put it down, but you keep your boobs. You keep your arm fat. It's fine. You're fine. You're doing great. Take up your space. Sorry if there was a new man on here. Report it. Don't let them, don't let them do that to you. You report those ads. If you watch an app, oh, by the way, I do actually enjoy that I have been getting nothing but Porsche ads on YouTube. I, I'm just going to say it. If you're, if you have a Porsche, you are paying for them to subscribe to me and, um, or to, to subscribe. You are paying them to advertise to me and, uh, would never, that's, I'm not going to get one of those. Like, I'm glad you wasted your money on that. <laughs> And yet I don't really want to complain about them because I don't mind those ads. So I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't like give me heart hurt. Cause I'm just like, no, I'm not interested in having that. Thank you. <laughs> and also it gives me a giggle because I'm just like, <laughs> clearly you are not using the camera function on this iPad to see where I live. <laughs> 
But anyway, okay, we're right, 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 right. Thanks for coming over. Go outside. Right? Just go outside for a minute. Enjoy some outside moments. It's been ridiculously cold in the Midwest, but we've had a nice break of weather um, in terms of like being able to actually go outside and breathe the air without being afraid. Um, so just remember like if you're inside because it's between it's the weird it's the weird water time between the new year and the Christmas Eve, just don't forget to go outside occasionally like you just just even it's just like to take out the trash or something I don't go pick up some litter I don't know but like oof, get outside just for a minute uh, yeah I'll talk to you next time